So, um, wow, the, uh, the, my first ever YouTube video and uh, 1,300 views to date. I am uh, thoroughly impressed. Uh, I, I, clearly this is, this is a topic that a lot of you are interested in and uh, from the comments that I saw, there are obviously a lot of questions that followed it as well. Uh, apologies that this has taken me a little while to get done. Uh, there was some refining around skills and the fittings to get this done, uh, but one of the big questions was, can you do this as an alpha? And I decided to take that challenge and, and, and do it. So I have come up with a method that works as well for alphas. So you are about to see footage that is done on an, on an alpha account. I, uh, I streamed this on Saturday and uh, it proved quite successful. I then did a hour and 44 minutes of running uh, prior to doing this today and uh, came away with some fairly fairly good results so uh, I'll give you a brief overview of the character um, so what you're looking at here is my um, alpha account I literally made this uh, where is history uh, pilot no ah, in history uh, so I literally made this character on the 25th of July uh, today's date now being the 28th. This character has 5 million skill points. I have used injectors just to kind of speed up the process. Um, but ultimately, everything that I have trained falls within um, the uh, Alpha clone. And total training time to be able to do what I'm doing in, in, in the way that I'm doing it. Uh, the skill plan was uh, 2 weeks and... Uh, six days, so almost three weeks. Um, but yeah, this is and um, this is an alpha account. It has not been upgraded. Um, there has been no additional things. This doesn't require the use of implants. Um, you don't. You, you're not needed to be in a fleet or anything like that. It's just the character as it is, as an alpha. Uh, the ship that we're going to be doing this in is uh, a Vexa and I will I'll go through that in in a bit more detail so hopefully this video is helpful and hopefully um, hopefully you guys are, uh, uh, kind of take to this as as well as you have the last one uh, if you have got any questions by all means feel free to leave them in the comments failing that I stream every Thursday Friday and Saturday starting at half seven UK time and uh, finishing between half ten half eleven and half twelve on those various days so um, yeah if you've got any questions like I said leave them in the comments otherwise feel free to pop them uh, feel feel free feel free to pop by the stream and uh, ask there okay so the first thing we're gonna get into is the fitting and the ship so this is a standard tech one vexor there are no additions to this there are no like i said there are no implants this just requires this ship the fitting is fairly basic i've kept it as simple as i can um, it does require the use of tech 2 guns however they don't aid much by way of additional dps it's just they're there for grabbing aggro is literally all i'm using them for so you could even run these down to uh, tech ones if you felt like it or change them out for um uh, tractor beams if 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 you felt like that um, the rest of it is a tech one probe launcher we've got the drone link augmenter here uh, we've got a 10 mn uh, tech one afterburner a cap battery that's mainly for newts if you're doing this in minmatar space a lot of the npcs there use neutralizers and this this counters that um, the only shiny things that we've got are the um the two hardeners here this one currently, the kinetic hardener is retailing at 11 million. The thermal is currently retailing at 14 million. Those are the two most expensive pieces on here. Um, and you're looking at a total build of 85 million. Um, I looked into this and to generate 85 million in high sec as a day one character, uh, you're probably looking at around a week and a half if that if you're only playing for sort of 40, 40 to 45 minutes a day and that's literally done by sitting in an asteroid belt mining veldspar 
Um, based on Tech One, based on Tech One bog standard skills, you'll you'll have that by the time you're ready to fly this ship. So um, the initial the initial fitting for the ship and and the ship itself is is fairly fairly easy to get. Um, now the there aren't any real big challenges by way of using this ship. It's more a case of understanding your positioning. Uh, because the drones are doing most of the work, your, your, your main job as, as the ship is to take the hits and keep yourself moving. So I'll be referring to a something called manual orbiting. And if you're not familiar with that, I will go into that a little later on when, we, when I actually show you running the dead sites. Um, but the principle for this is basically positioning and applying DPS in the right order. So it's targeting the right things in the right order. Um, again, this is aimed primarily at alphas, as was obviously mainly requested in the previous video. So, yeah, that's that's the fitting. It's it's not extensive. The fit for this will be posted in the description. So there will be an Eve workbench, so you can just use that to pull the fittings from it, um, and you can export that straight into Eve as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful, and we'll jump on to the next bit. Okay. So really quick before I get into jumping onto uh, the method and the, the application of that, I just wanted to give you a brief idea of uh, a quick quick view of what exactly you can expect to receive from this. So like I said, this was done on an hour and 40 minutes of running and I came away with, uh, I got this, 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 that, uh, that, uh, these two here, and a bunch of Tech One modules. So these here, it, so this is estimating the price of 256 million. Using this method at a roughly sort of two hours a day, three times a week, means that in theory, you should be able to pay for an Omega status on your account following, uh, following this pretty much as is uh, it will give you all the tools you need to keep yourself subscribed to the game without actually having to front up any money what we're going to do now is i'm going to close all this down and i'm going to go ahead and jump over to the video which is the recording of the clips so we're right back okay on to the first step route planning so Route planning is very simple. It doesn't require much thought. Essentially, all you're doing is using the distance between where you are and another system using that little tool that pops up that says how many jumps away it is and adding that as a waypoint. So your first one, you wanna be aiming for around sort of seven to eight. Then you wanna be aiming for a further 13. Then you wanna be aiming for a further 15 and then so on and so forth until you've got yourself a fairly long route. It doesn't have to be 40 jumps. It doesn't have to be, uh, it, but essentially it can be as long or as short as you make it. The shorter it is, the more times you're probably gonna stumble over your own respawns and your own triggers. So, you know, play with it as you feel, but just, just you know, bear in mind that the longer the route, the more opportunity you're gonna have. The shorter the route, the faster you'll end up doubling back on yourself. Um, once you've got your route all set in, this one came in, I believe, 74 four jumps in total. I've got a little technique that I um, I dropped on stream on Saturday, which was if you open up in the Neocom under, I believe it's utilities. Um, I was waiting for it to load. And under utilities, if you drag and drop the plus symbols into a notepad on there, you can save your route for later. So that means that you can just go ahead, right click, add new destination, and go ahead and basically set yourself up with a new route. Once you've got that route preset in your, in your notepad, whenever you go to do this again, you haven't got to go messing around with the map. You just open up your notepad, right click on whichever systems you've got in whichever order you've got them, add as waypoint, set your route, and you're done. That will literally save you a ton of time, especially if you find something that works really well for you. For instance, my route that I've got, which is, um, I, I won't share it on stream, and I won't share it on here, it's, it's one that I keep for myself, covers all four regions, 
totals, uh, I believe it's about 900 jumps in total. It actually requires two sets of autopilots, so, or two sets of um, uh, routing. So once you have set the first route, I'll then go ahead and create a new route uh, once that one's finished, which will then give me the remaining ones because there's actually a limit on, on the current routing system. Um, but that literally then takes me through all four regions and means that I'm, I'm basically covering the most amount of ground to make the most amount of money, which is ultimately what this is all about doing. So yeah, that's route planning. Again, any questions, pop them in the comments and I will, uh, I will do what I can to help. On to the next bit. Fairly simple, run your route. Follow your route that you've got set planned, going into each system, dropping your probes, scanning each cosmic signature down to a point where you know what it is. If it is a combat site, continue to scan it down to 100%. While you're scanning, you're simply just going to be running your anomalies. You're looking for hideaways and refuges. That's all you're looking for. You're not looking for hidden hideaways. You're not looking for um, forlorn refuges. You're just looking for simply hideaway or refuge. These have the escalations that you're ideally looking for, which is scout outpost. It's, a, it's essentially scout outpost. As an alpha, that's what you're going to be looking for. So we go, we run, we scan. And that's it. Move on to the next system. If you scanned everything and there's nothing there, move on to your next one. It's about speed and consistency, and that's what's going to do it for you. Um, when it comes to scanning, the simplest process I can tell you, set your probes to 4AU. Set them to precision. And basically, on your map itself, just untick all of the... In the top left-hand corner, uh, there's a little like marker. Just click on that and untick everything. You don't need any of that stuff selected. When you launch a probe, you're literally looking for the little white dots. If they're inside that big red circle, put your probes at 4AU and make sure that little white circle is inside the very center square. Once you've done that, hit your scan and nine times out of 10, you will get the signal. I'm not saying it's 100% perfect. There are some that will fall just outside of the 4AU. They tend to either be wormholes or sleeper sites, but in the main, 4AU on any orbital body, which is a planet or a sun, hit scan and nine times out of 10, you will get that signal between 10 and 13%. Again, just using alpha skills, I was still able to replicate those results, meaning that it does work regardless of whether you're alpha or omega. Obviously, the benefits of doing it as an omega is that you've got a shorter scan cycle, you've got a more precise scan result, meaning that your first scan will produce maybe a 40 to 50% result, telling you exactly what it is on your first hit, whereas the second uh, on an alpha, potentially your second scan is, got, is what is going to tell you what the name of that site is. But go into a system, scan the sites, uh, scan the anomalies, and run uh, uh, scan the signatures and run the anomalies. That's all there is to it. Okay, so you successfully scan down a cosmic signature, as you'll see here. Um, and it comes up with the vigil or it comes up with the scout outpost. Um, there is another one as well, and I'll put uh, a list of them here, just so that you've got those. Um, but there are three that you're looking for in the main. Scout Outpost, Vigil, and a third that I can't remember, but again, it's up on the screen, so you can see that. You essentially want to just, once you get in there, put yourself into a manual orbit. Now, the best way I can explain to do this, and it may take a couple of a, a, like a couple of tries of getting some practice at it, so try it out in space without any hostiles around first. But essentially what you're doing is you're manually double clicking the space that your ship is in, and you are adjusting your, your angle manually, rather than just pressing the orbit at and then putting it in a range. You'll see me doing that on this, gives me a very, like I start taking a substantial amount of damage because I'm only just at the threshold, which is the 75% the peak um, transversal velocity um, angle. Now, as I start manually orbiting, which you'll see here, I'm double clicking in space and adjusting my, my, my angles manually, the damage that I'm taking starts going down and that's because I'm able to keep my speed higher. So, or manually orbiting is always an advisable idea. To begin with, set your default orbit at 5,000 meters. 
This should, in theory, give you between an 80 and 90% velocity, um, a, a speed velocity. Um, it'll keep your momentum uh, uh, around sort of 90%. Watch out for obstacles. You may still bump into them, and if you do, it's potentially going to have some fairly drastic uh, uh, outcomes for you. In this instance, you'll see I'm running the Vigil. Now, when I get into the next room, so once I've cleared everything out in here and I get into the next room, the first thing you want to target, and this is important, the first thing you want to target as soon as you get into the second room of the Vigil, the first thing you want to target and eliminate is the Stasis Towers. Make sure you remove those from the field because they are going to drop your speed down to around 40 meters a second. It is going to hurt. So you want to double click. There's a big like asteroid, a hollowed out asteroid dead ahead of you. Fly straight through the center of that asteroid. Just make a beeline straight for the middle of it. And while you're doing that, make sure your drones are out and you're engaging both stasis towers. As soon as you've killed the final stasis tower, make sure you're burning straight forward. You want to cut up and to the right and come back around. This will help you re-engage and you can get your orbit aligned on the central uh, warp gate. That's the best bit of advice I can give you when it comes to running this. The next bit of advice, and this works for all sites, is target priority. Now, it's all well and good jumping into a site and, and, and basically just throwing out drones and killing everything that's shooting at you. But the problem is, your drones by default are going to go for the easiest targets first. You'll actually see what I'm talking about with the, um, the positioning. Here, I aim for the center of the console, uh, the center of the asteroid field, and I'm immediately targeting both the um, stasis webbing towers, taking those out first. With regards to target acquisition, like I said, your drones by default will target the weaker, um, more aggressive targets first, which are the ones that are hitting you more frequently. These tend to be smaller ships, like frigates and destroyers. Your priority should always be biggest first. Battleship, battle cruiser, cruiser, destroyer, frigate. In that order. Are there no battleships? Go for the battle cruisers. Are there no cru battle cruisers? Go for the cruisers. Always take out the larger targets first. The smaller ones are going to pop really fast. Your priority is about getting rid of the the, the bigger stuff first. Um, I've got a thing up on the screen now, which is showing you the different variations of the 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 like the ship symbols, so you can familiarise yourself with those. But ultimately, like I said, you want to be aiming for battleships first, then battle cruisers then cruisers, then um, destroyers, and then frigates. Um, this will save your life and ultimately make this whole process a lot easier. And that's, that's pretty much it. Um, when it comes to uh, running these sites themselves, you'll get escalations. I think we get one here on this one. Yep, there you go. Uh, we get one here on this one. Uh, the next one I'm going into, I believe, is a scout outpost. Um, and it's... The, the scout outpost one, again, if you're following that same rule of taking the first gate... Um, Actually, I think this is an escalation. This one escalates into a... Um, I run the hideaway, it escalates into a scout outpost. Um, when you're running the scout outpost, your first priority when you get in there is to target all the mower class ships. Don't worry about the caracal, don't worry about the frigates, because the caracal and the frigates are going to chase you down. So they're always going to be in range, whereas the, the mower class frigate... Uh, the mower class vessels are going to run. They are going to make as best speed away from you as possible, which can make engagement really hard as an alpha because you, you're limited by your skills to the range that you can lock at. So take out the cruisers first, um, that are the mower class ships, then take out the commander, which is the caracal, and then let your drones just erase the rest of the frigates. They'll do that quite easily. Don't forget to loot the, um, the scout. Um, the, the caracal. Oh, there you go. There's the scout outpost. Don't forget to loot the caracal because it could have a 600, I think it's a 600,000-esque um, 
uh, overseer's assets in it. So it could be really, really helpful to have that. But yeah, you'll notice here, watch, everything that I target is the mower class ships. That's all I've targeted. That's the priority. Take them out first because they will break range and this, depending on your positioning, could have a drastic impact because you're, you're essentially too far away from them to lock. You've then got to approach them, which then means that you're potentially lining yourself up for a straight shot straight to the face and that tends to cause you to explode, which is bad. When you get into the next room, uh, you'll actually end up uh, the first thing you want to do is take out the sentry gun. Launch your drones, again, don't worry, they're probably going to get attacked, but that's the reason why I picked Hobgoblins. They've got such a small signature radius and such a, a they, their, their damage output is, is pretty good. So because of that, they do absorb quite a bit of damage. Um, but you want to put the Hobgoblins straight out and put them straight onto the sentry gun as soon as you get into the second room. If they start taking damage, recall them, but make sure you're already locked into your manual orbit. You're already at full speed before you recall them, because everything in that room is about to start shooting you. Put yourself in your orbit, keep turning, keep shooting. Um, while your drones are taking out the, uh, the NPCs, you want to focus on taking out the satellite dish with the two railguns. And that's literally the only time I've felt myself using them for anything significant. You see me using them here just to basically annoy the crap out of the, um, the sentry there. But other than that, first thing I target is the sentry gun. Drones on the sentry gun, I put myself into orbit. I'm locking up the cruisers, as I mentioned before. Drones are on the cruisers. I'll then start opening fire on the uh, telescope so that ultimately where all the prize and the goo is, I get it. Um, like I said, this run turned out really well. I came out with around 250 million-esque for an hour and 40 minutes of running and a lot of that was basically just jumping systems because there wasn't many sites in because I think you lot may have all been stealing them all since the last video. Anyway, it's fine, and like I said, I was still able to make a quarter of a billion isk with, with those limitations still there, so yeah. Uh, hopefully this has proved helpful, and like I said, if you have got any questions, by all means, feel free to pop them in the, in the, in the comments, and I will I will respond as, as and when I can. Um, I stream on Twitch every uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, starting at half seven. So again, if you've got any questions, if they're Eve related, I stream Eve on Saturdays. Um, if you want to just come and hang out, by all means, feel free to do so. Um, and yeah, until then, I will. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.